Hello YouTube, this is Garwin again with another video. Today's video I'm going to show you guys how to set up your own dedicated Minecraft Java Edition server. For those who don't know, there's two major code bases for Minecraft. There's the Minecraft Java Edition, which is sort of the original base version of Minecraft that is available for download on Windows PCs, Mac OS X, and Linux, and basically anything that can run Java. The other version is the version that you'll find in the Windows 10 App Store, uh, on the consoles like the Xbox and the PlayStation, uh, the Wii U, the Switch, things of that nature. And that version has actually been rewritten, I believe, in C or C Sharp or something like that. There's not a 100% feature parity between the two. For example, the Java Edition has shields and the other versions do not. The other major difference as it pertains to this video is that with the console versions and the version that you find in the Windows 10 Store, you cannot host your own private dedicated server on your own hardware. The only way to play multiplayer is either to invite someone into your realm while you're playing and then when you sign out they can't play on your world anymore or to pay for a Minecraft realm. And if you've seen the other video, I'm not particularly happy with the performance I'm getting out of the Minecraft realm. And I just like hosting my own stuff whenever I have that option because I've got the hardware available. I might as well make use of it and it gives me a little bit more granular control over the server. Now with the Java edition of Minecraft, there is actually an official server client that you can go download and use to host your own dedicated server and it gives you more granular control over the multiplayer experience. You don't have to be logged in in order for the people that you allow access uh, to log in and play on the world. You can edit the configuration files and modify all kinds of different aspects of the world. You can use Archon to actually run commands on the server without even logging into the server yourself. So if, for example, somebody logs in for their first time and they need a little bit of helping hand, maybe they're new to the game and you don't want it to become nighttime five minutes after they log in, you can actually just log in and make it daytime and keep it daytime for them without you having to personally log in as your character in the game. So anyway, the first thing you're going to need, if you don't already have it, is Java. You can go to www.java.com and download the latest version of Java. So the next thing we need is to get the Minecraft server software. So let's go to Minecraft.net. We're going to go up here to Menu. We're going to click Trial and Download. You can see here's some text that says you can also set up your own Minecraft server from home. So let's go ahead and click that and we're going to download this jar file. Now you can see here they actually have their own written tutorial right here which we're going to reference a little bit later because it has some useful information. But let's go ahead and uh, just download this jar file. We're going to save as and we're going to go to our desktop make a new folder and just name it MC server. Alright we're going to save that close this. Now to execute the server we're actually going to use this command from the command line. So I'm going to explain what some of this means. And let's open the folder where the uh, Minecraft server software has been downloaded. And let's go ahead and open our command prompt here. We're just going to click the start button and click command prompt. There we go. Now in order for this command to work, you can see it's basically saying Java, some arguments, and then the file name that we just downloaded here. And in order for this to work, since it's in this folder, we need to make sure that we're actually operating inside of this folder. So let's copy that file path, come over to our command prompt, type cd space, and then just right click, and it'll paste that path, and then you can press enter. Now we can come back over here, copy this command. and same thing come back over here right click it'll paste now let me explain what some of this stuff does these two arguments here the minus xmx and minus xms they indicate the minimum and maximum amount of memory that the server client is going to use if you experience uh, a laggy server maybe you've got a lot going on in your server and you have the additional ram or re additional resources available you can actually increase this number and then minus jar is just because it's a .jar java file. No GUI means that it's going to run in the terminal for output. So let's go ahead and bring up our folder here. Put our command prompt oh, put our command prompt right here. 
and we're going to go ahead and execute this because what this is going to do the first time it executes it's going to create some files that we're going to have to do some stuff with so let's go ahead and press enter on the command now you can see right here uh, you need to agree to the EULA in order to run the server go to EULA.txt for more info so let's go ahead and open our EULA and you can see it's got a variable here EULA equals false and if you want to read the end user license agreement they give you the URL to it here so let's go ahead and check that out so here's your Minecraft end user license agreement. Once you've read that and you understand, let's go ahead and come back over here to this text file. And we'll just change the value of EULA from false to true and save it. And now we're going to run it again. And this time it's actually going to start the server. Now if you want to change settings, change the type of server and everything, I want to show you how to do that here in a little bit. But we need to start the server the first time because what it's going to do, it's going to generate a whole lot of files for us to take action on. So let's go ahead and press the up arrow key which should enter the last command that we ran. And then just press enter again. Now if it pops this up and asks for permission to be let through the firewall, you can go ahead and select private networks and hit allow access. And you can see here it says preparing spawn area done now you can see it generated all kinds of new files in here let's go ahead and bring up our mine cl minecraft client here and we're going to go ahead and add the server and uh, we'll click multiplayer we're going to hit add server we're going to put uh, youtube minecraft server now the server name can be whatever you want it to be. The server address is going to be the IP address of the machine that is hosting the server. So let's go ahead and open up another command prompt window here. And we're going to run the command ipconfig. And what you see our IP address is 10.1.1.3. So we're going to go ahead and just punch that in to here, 10.1.1.3, and hit done. And let's refresh our list here. And you can see we have an active Minecraft server. If we click the little play button here on it, it should load us in. Now if we pop over here, we should see Garrowan logged in with Entity, blah, blah, blah. So there's the information that shows that we just logged in. So let's go ahead and disconnect and open our folder back up here and our command prompt now we're gonna go ahead and kill the server so to kill the server we just bring up our command prompt window and hit control and C alright so the server has died we're back at a command prompt here now we can make the changes to the world that we want if we want it to be a creative world if we want it to be a certain type of world if we want it to be survival with a certain difficulty things of that nature we can now make those changes because it has generated all of these files. The world folder here is going to be where the world itself is saved. So since we're going to make some changes, let's go ahead and just delete the world that it generated by itself. All right, the next thing we're going to do is open this server.properties file. I've got Genie, which is a text and code editor that I like, but if you just double click it, you should get this little thing. So we can click on more apps and scroll down and find Notepad. And in here is where we're going to find all of the variables that dictate uh, how the world itself is going to operate. So we're going to go ahead and make some changes to some of these variables. Now to understand what these variables mean, we need to go reference the walkthrough that Minecraft told us they had. So let's go ahead and we're going to scroll down here to the bottom. Or we can just do a search for, uh, do control F for server.properties. And find one, there's one here that's actually a link. And this page will actually show you what all of these different variables mean and what their valid values can be. So we can see here uh, level dash name is just going to be what we want the world to be named. So where it says world we're going to name it YouTube Minecraft server. Max players we just want to be one because it's just going to be me. Uh, let's see here generate structures most of these variables I generally leave uh, as their default things message of the day is going to be if you look here the message of the day is what's going to be displayed under your world name when you see it in the multiplayer server list here so let's go ahead and change our message of the day to a minecraft server for YouTube 
Uh, let's scroll on down here and uh, serve report. This is going to be important because if it doesn't ask you to open the Windows firewall or if you're running a third party firewall program, the server port, this is going to tell you what port you need to open on your firewall so that you and other people will be able to connect to the Minecraft server. Uh, let's look up for where we at here. Game mode, it's up here. There we go. Game mode. This changes whether it's creative, survival, things of that nature. So you've got valid values of 0, 1, 2, and 3. So we have, where are we at here? Game dash mode. Oh, there we go. Game mode is 0, so it's going to be a survival world. Let's go ahead and change this one to be a shared creative world just for the sake of YouTube. All right, so we've made some changes. Let's go ahead and save the changes. Pop back over to our command line here and uh, execute the server again just by pressing up to get to the last command and press enter. So now we have a folder that says YouTube Minecraft server. Now one other variable you may want to take a look at in the server.properties file, or two other variables, uh, one would be the level dash seed. You can see that right now it's blank, which means it's just going to use a random seed. The seed is basically, uh, the worlds in Minecraft are procedurally generated, which means they're sort of randomized, and there's an algorithm that goes into generating the world. And the seed is some piece of information that you can give that algorithm that it will use to generate the world. Uh, there are websites that will actually share interesting seeds. So let's say somebody had a world generate that had this cool jungle dungeon in a certain location. Uh, they can share that seed and you can place that seed into this variable here and your Minecraft server will generate that world. The other variable that you may want to take a look at is white-list. Since you're running your own dedicated server on your hardware, it makes sense that you might want to restrict who can and cannot log in. Now, if you're running on your own private network and you don't have the ports on your router forwarded to your server, you don't have to worry about this because only you guys will be able to connect. But let's say you're in a situation like me where my brother actually lives in the next town over but he likes to play on my Minecraft server and so I have the ports on the router forwarded and open to the internet but I don't want anybody who has Minecraft to be able to log in what we do is we go to this white hyphen list file and we change the value from false to true and we save it now let's go ahead and kill our server here with a control C and then restart it now with whitelist enabled now we have not added anybody to the whitelist, but we have enabled whitelist. So it's going to prepare the spawn area again. It's done. Let's go ahead back to the server list, refresh. Now when we try to connect, it should tell us that we can't we have not been whitelisted. Failed to connect to the server. You are not whitelisted on this server. So how do you whitelist a player? Alright, so this walkthrough doesn't tell you how to use the whitelist that I can find, so I'm gonna go ahead and tell you how I do it. Uh, you need the player's UUID. The way I usually find it is I just Google Minecraft UUID. MCUUID.net. You enter the username of the person you want the UUID for. So let's say you wanted to whitelist me. You could just type Garrowin. And this gives you their UUID. You're going to want the full UUID. Alright, you can see over here I've actually logged into my Minecraft server, my actual Minecraft server and printed the contents of my whitelist file over there. So what we need to do is come over here and open our whitelist.json file and edit it. So let's go ahead first and let's kill our server with control C. And let's open whitelist. Now you can open it with notepad. I'm going to open mine with genie. And you can see it's blank. It's just got two brackets here. So let's go ahead and create a line in between these two brackets. Now let's go ahead and tab one time and open squiggle bracket enter then we're gonna do quotation UID end quote colon space open quote 
the full UUID of myself, end quote. Then we're going to do comma, enter, quotation, name, end quote, colon, space, and the name of the player, the name you want them to show up as. So we'll do Garrowin, end quote, and then enter, and in either backspace or shift tab, to go back one tab, we're going to end squiggle bracket. If you are the only person that you're allowing, or if this is the last person that you want to have in the whitelist file, you're done. If you're going to add another person after this, you want to put a comma here. If the comma is here and there's no other people following, it'll break it and it won't work properly. So let's go ahead and backspace here. Quick caveat here, something I forgot to mention. Each player that you wish to whitelist is going to have their own squiggle bracket enclosure. So for example, let's say you wanted to add a second person after me you would put a comma and then enter down to a new line and start a new open squiggle bracket and format it exactly the way you just saw me do for myself except you would substitute in the UUID and name for the user that you wanted to add as your second, third, fourth, or fifth players and so every player is going to have their own little block enclosed in squiggle brackets. Save our file. Close here. And then restart our server and now we should actually be able to log in it's done let's refresh our list and click play and we're in and let's pop over here and let's kill our server one last time because now what we're gonna do we're gonna create a script to launch our server for us so that we don't have to remember this Java uh, command so let's go ahead and close our command line here. Let's open our folder. Let's open Notepad since it's no longer open. And let's go over here and let's copy the command that we used. And we're going to paste it in a Notepad. And get rid of that space at the end. We're going to click File, Save As. We're going to put it in, okay, we're already in the correct folder here. But we're going to change Save As Type from Text Documents to all files. Then we're going to name it whatever you want to name it dot .bat. So I'm going to name mine startmc dot .bat, B-A-T. One quick caveat here. If you update your Minecraft server software, which will be necessary in the future as Minecraft receives future updates, the file name will change. So you will need to go in and edit your script and replace the old file name with the new file name for the updated Java server software. I'm going to hit save. Then we're going to close it. So now what we should be able to do is instead of using the command line to manually run that command, we should now be able to just double click this file that says start mc. It's done. Let's refresh in our multiplayer server. Let's connect. When you're done, if you want to close it, you just control C. Yes, terminate batch job. And that's it. You can even right click, send to desktop, and now we should have a desktop icon for our Minecraft server. So we can actually give it a little custom icon and everything. But let's double click it and test it here. And there we have automated, well, kind of automated the process of starting our Minecraft server. So let's control C to kill it. Yes, terminate batch job. Let's go ahead and exit this. All right, so let's say you want to log into the server remotely and run commands in your Minecraft server without having to be sitting at the machine that is actually hosting the server. That's where Archon comes into play. So we need to open our server.properties file and we need to check a couple of variables. Now, a couple of these were not in my server.properties, so I had to manually add them by uh, actually citing the Minecraft wiki page that shows you all of the arguments that can go into the server.properties file. 
So we need to make sure that enable dash archon is equal to true. The actual location of that variable may be somewhere else in your file. We need to set a password by finding archon.password wherever it went to here. There it is. And this is just going to be a string of text that you want to be the password. So we're going to make it me. And we need to take note of the archon port on archon.port. I think the default is this right here, 25575. So let's go ahead and save here. Let's pop over to here. And now let's download this nice little piece of software I discovered called MC Archon. It's a Minecraft Archon client uh, that I discovered that seems to work pretty well. So let's go ahead and download it. We're going to save this into the folder with our Minecraft server. And then we're going to extract it to its own folder. And let's go ahead and start our server and let it be starting up. Uh, there we are. And let's go into the, the MC Archon folder here. And it's got a readme that explains how to use it. But the gist is this. Run the create shortcut script. You answer the question, so if we're going to connect to a remote host, you would enter it here, but since we're connecting to ourselves, we're just going to leave it as the loopback address. The port is correct. The password is this. And we're going to name it. Uh, do not use names that have spaces in them. It doesn't seem to like spaces, so we're just going to name it YouTube underscore server. Any key to continue. And there is the batch script to connect to our server here. So now let's actually go ahead and log into our server here. And I will show you that we can do some stuff. All right, so you can see that it is currently dark outside. So let's pop over here and let's run our YouTube server script in MC Archon. We're logged in. So let's say time set day. It's daytime. Nighttime. Daytime. All right. Let's say we said something. All right. Test message. It would actually show up in the the output log from our Minecraft server itself. It does not show up in MC Archon because MC Archon is just an avenue for running commands on the server, but it doesn't actually log output and things of that nature. Now, two other commands you might actually find uh, useful are the save dash all command which forcibly saves the world in its current status player locations things of that nature and the stop command and what those commands do they give you the ability let's say there's a power outage and you need to shut your server down from your archon console you could do something like say say there is a power outage and the server needs to shut down all right and that message will actually appear in game there so that you can send messages to the people in the world and then save your world and then stop which g stops the server now there's a whole slew you can google minecraft archon commands there's several other commands that you can actually use in the Archon console to do all kinds of stuff, but those are some of the ones that I use most of the time. So that is how you set up MC Archon and use it to run commands on the server to do things without necessarily having to actually be logged in to the machine that is hosting the server. Alright, well that about wraps everything up. We have an operational Minecraft server. We have made some configuration changes to some of the config files in the folder. We've set it up so that only whitelisted users can connect to the server. We've set up Archon so we can actually log into the server and execute commands that affect the game world without logging into the game ourselves. So, we are good to go. If you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, or suggestions, please feel free to post them in the comment section below, and I will get to them as necessary. And if I can't answer your question, I will at the very least try to point you in the direction of a resource that will answer your question.
For those who don't know, YouTube has recently revised their policy regarding how many subscribers and how many watch hours you have to have before you're allowed to monetize your video and be a YouTube partner. One of my friends that has been affected by this is Tim Hiley. You can find him at youtube.com slash user slash Tim Hiley. He's got a lot of cool content over here. If you like video game footage, 3D modeling, Dragon Ball Z, things of that nature, please go check out his channel. Consider giving a, him a subscription. It would really help him out and really help him continue to be compensated for the work that he puts into creating this content. He also live streams quite a bit of gameplay footage on Twitch. You can go check him out at Ixy Timmy Ixy over there. He's actually partnered on Twitch, so please think about going and checking out his stuff. If you like the content on his YouTube channel, toss him a, a subscription. It would really help him out. And if you guys have any comments or questions about my video, like I said, just post them in the comments section below. And as always, this is Garrowin out. Y'all have a good one.